Hey everyone, welcome to Peer Scholar, uh, Peer Scholar activity. Yeah, you know, the way things are kind of working, you're getting the sense of it that, you know, at the very sort of first quarter, we had the welcome activity that you guys went through. Now we're into the second quarter and sort of spanning the second and into the third, we'll be doing this Peer Scholar activity. Um, and then at the end of the course, we'll be doing um, an experiential learning or work integrated learning activity. Um, so you kind of have those three activities spanned apart. You'll also have a little module to do um, at, at some point along the way as well um, about psychological addiction. So that'll be kind of cool too. <clears throat> this is all about Peer Scholar. Okay, so this video, I'm really gonna focus on the first step of your Peer Scholar activity. So that's the first thing I want to say is that the Peer Scholar activities actually involve three distinct steps. One where you create something, the next where you provide feedback to your peers, so you see some of the work of the peers and you provide feedback to them. Um, and then a third step where you see feedback that peers have given you, um, specifically suggestions of how your work could be improved, and you then get the opportunity to analyze that feedback and then use it. Um, revise your work, make it better thanks to the ideas of your peers, um, and actually do a, what we call a formative revision of that work to submit. Okay, so we can call that the create phase where you create, the assess phase where you're assessing your peers, and the reflect phase where you're looking at feedback, reflecting on it, and then using it to improve. Um, so you can find some videos here that just walk you through the general peer scholar process, not just how it happens, but why we're doing that to you. So those would be the first things um, I suggest you do is to go to the, um, I, I think I'll call it something like, what's this peer scholar all about or something like that tab uh, and watch a couple of videos there that will just they're about three minutes each and they'll just kind of walk you through the basic idea of peer scholar okay so what i'm going to do for the rest of this one then is focus on the first part the create phase um, and what i want you to do there and then when we get to the assess phase and the reflect phase i'll give you instructions for those phases um, but let's just do one thing at a time um, keep it straightforward all right so first of all What's the purpose of this activity? Everything should have a purpose. And what I'm really hoping to do with this activity is to make you feel more comfortable directly connecting with the scientific literature. So you learned in chapter two about the scientific process and you know how, how everything works in terms of doing experiments and getting at the, the truth of things at least as much as science to get at the truth. But also you've heard about the fact that everything has to be peer reviewed before it gets published. And therefore we trust those published papers um, more than you should trust things that you just find online. So how do you get at those published papers? And you know what about this process of reading them and understanding them? That's sort of what this activity is going to be about. So specifically, I'm gonna walk you through an example but just let me tell you the general task you're going to have is just this. I want you to go to the psychological literature and find an experiment that you think is cool. Pretty, pretty open there. Um, so, you know, I would almost expect every one of you to ultimately find a different experiment. Um, but you find an experiment that's cool. Um, read that experiment. Now you may go to a paper and there may be multiple experiments within a paper. Sometimes there are, you know, sometimes up to four or five or six different experiments described in one paper. So ultimately I want you to focus on one experiment. Okay. But make sure it's an experiment. Remember from chapter two, don't do a correlational study. Don't do an observational study. I want an experimental study. So find an experiment within some paper that you think is really cool. Um, so it should relate to an issue you find interesting. Um, but then, you know, when you actually look at the science behind it, hopefully you'll find the science cool. All right. And so, yeah, find that paper, read that paper. And then what you're going to produce for me is sort of a summary of it. But specifically, I want you to pretend that you are going to present this to a grade 12 class. I want you to pretend that a teacher of yours from grade from your previous high school has reached out and invited you to come in. And what she's asked you to do is the following. Can you bring some experiment into the class that will demonstrate to students you know, why experiments are interesting and how they can tell us something about something we find interesting. So I want you to come into the class and I want you to give me a, a, a summary of that experiment. 
but I also want you to kind of explain to them the science behind the, that experiment. So as you're going through the experiment, highlight things like what were the independent variables? What were the dependent variables? What was the theory that was being tested? What was the hypothesis that was being tested? What did the results suggest? And what does that all mean for the theory or the hypothesis? So take them on that journey of science um, and, and sort of describe to them science using that experiment as, as your example. Um, and so you can talk in general that, you know, in, in science, the experiments involve a contrast of some control condition with an experimental condition, for example, in this experiment. And then you can talk about what they did there. OK, so you're really going to demonstrate to the students, which will ultimately be the TA's grading, um, the, the work, um, that you not just that you understand the experiment, um, but that you can present it in a way that shows its coolness. All right, so I'm, gonna, I'm challenging you guys basically to be a teacher here, to step up to the role of teaching um, and, and you know presenting it in that way, the way you would present it to a group of grade 12 students. Uh, I was almost going to ask you to videotape yourself presenting, but I know students get a little itchy when it comes to videotaping themselves and sending it along, so I'm not going to ask you to do that, but I almost want you to imagine that. You're standing in front of a group of grade 12s. This is what I'd say. And so what you should be submitting in your create phase is, is essentially your script of, of what you should say. Now, you will see there'll be details um, posted um, that will hit things like word length and all that kind of stuff. So check out all of those details in general. But I wanted to give you the, the more high level problem here first, not problem, the, the task, what I'm asking you to do. OK, now I want to sort of show you how to do it. Um, you have a couple of weeks, right? And so Here's what I would do. Uh, first of all, let's go. Let's go here online. Here, let's just mess up a bunch of stuff here. And um, I might start with OpenAI. So as I start to think, well, okay, I was given this. Um, oh, except all oh, I thought I could just get into here and would know it. Learn more. I don't want to learn more. Um, I want to just use it. Oh. Now I'm like bouncing all around. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Um, I've got it open in my other window. I was gonna save you the other window because my other window is a mess. <laughs> but it has OpenAI open. <laughs> so there we go. Um, chat GPT, some of the, and, and you see, by the way, I've been playing around with, with chat. See, this is where I found a, found a, the Kendrick Lamar song until I listened to it and then didn't like it. Uh, so I use chat GPT to help me with things like that. Um, So <laughs> what would I do? Well, I, I would start with that challenge. I would say um, I need to find, I need to find an interesting psychology experiment. And I'd like one that relates to, and now, so maybe um, self-awareness in animals, I'll put. Now you're all gonna wanna do self-awareness in animals. <laughs> Can you suggest, and I might even, if it were me, some recent uh, experiments? Uh, because the recent ones tend to tell you a whole lot more. Um, okay, so here we're, we're getting some things that we could look into. Now I could have asked about dreams, I could have asked about extrasensory perception, I could have asked about um, bonds between parents and children, you know, you should just sort of flip through your textbook, take a look through your textbook at some of the issues um, that, that's covered and you can find all sorts of things. But now here, um, uh, ignore, oh, just go away. Okay, um, <laughs> sorry, I didn't mean go away to you, I meant go away to that. Uh, so here's some examples, elephants in the mirror test um, involved elephants recognizing themselves in a mirror and they showed self-directed behavior such as touching marks on their heads. Okay, that sounds kind of interesting. Magpies and the mirror test. Magpies are birds. You know, are you heard of bird brains? You know, we make fun of birds, you're such a bird brain. Well, turns out Birds can be pretty darn intelligent, um, including and especially birds like magpies and others. Um, and so here's, you know, the magpie doing something called the mirror test again. Uh, a lot of the self-awareness in animals will be will be some form of mirror test, probably. Um, 
So you see here to pass a version of the mirror test. Now, one thing I want to let you know, just because chat GPT says it's true does not mean it's true. <laughs> okay. Chat GPT makes things up and it's what's called hallucinations and it makes things up in a very convincing and strong way. So simply because it's saying, hey, here's an experiment, check this out, um, you're going to have to go to the experiment. <laughs> you're not going to have to trust ChatGPT. You certainly wouldn't want, you know, you might be tempted to say, hey, hey, ChatGPT, could you please write a short essay about the Populin experiment? as if you were presenting it to a grade 12 class. And so this, this is the temptation with ChatGPT, right? And so here we go. And I could have given it a word limit. I could have done all sorts of things, right? But, but this, this looks pretty good. Now, there's almost nothing wrong with this as a start. But again, ChatGPT will make stuff up. It will get things wrong. Um, and you won't really understand it well based on, on just this. But you can imagine, you know, this is the kind of, and this is the, the world that the TAs are, are in, right? It's this easy to produce something that looks pretty good. Um, and, and so, you know, you live in a world of chat GPT, so maybe you might want to do that. But but still, you're going to want to look at this very closely for a couple of reasons. You're going to want to make sure it's accurate because we can tell, right? We know what's chat GPT. You can tell chat GPT. It likes certain words. It likes whatever. We can tell what's, what's there or not. Um, and so when we see this is chat GPT, what we really start looking for is, yeah, okay, but what did the student do with it? Does it look like this is just the raw output from chat GPT? In which case, eh, but if it looks like the student actually made it their own, um, you know, made it s sound more like them and obviously went through it to, to edit some things, um, and, and yeah, and to make sure it was accurate and all that kind of stuff, those are the ones that are going to get the better marks, right? If it just looks like it was pasted in from ChatGPT, it's not all that exciting um, to us. Um, so you'll still get a you'll still get a mark, but you probably won't get as good a mark um, as you will if it really feels like it's coming from you, okay? Instead of that generic. Chat GPT kind of vibe, um, but okay. But this is an example of how you could start. This could at least tells you a little bit more about this study. But then what you really want to do is get to the study. And so Populin 2017. So now I'm going to go. I'll go back over here now um, to to um, Google Scholar. If you don't know Google Scholar yet, you got to get friends with Google Scholar at some point. Put in that person's name, and I'll say 2017. And we should be. <laughs> so we may have found exactly a case here. Um, and what I mean by that, ah, so this is exactly this is exactly what i what i mean by this now we're finding a whole lot of self-reflection self con mirror tests we're getting all kinds of stuff fish in the mirror test we're not getting this this is a hallucination apparently um it doesn't seem to be let's put rhesus monkeys So here's capuchin monkeys, but it doesn't even have that author involved in it. See, so I mean, that's that's the danger of ChatGPT. Okay, if you just try to submit, so if we go to that, and this is what the TAs are going to do, they're going to quickly bring up that that um, study and have it there. And if it if it turns out there is no study, well, they're going to say you're you're giving a summary of an experiment that doesn't exist, and and you'll probably get zero. Okay, so I think this is a good example of why 
you can chat GPT is a great place to start, but a horrible place to end. Okay, it can get you thinking, it can get you used to the experiment a little bit, but this one's obviously not very good. Um, yikes, all right, well, what else sounds good? Dogs, maybe I care about dogs. Um, oh, I always wanted to do this one because dogs don't usually pass the normal mirror test. So let's see if this guy, 2016, exists. Gani, 2016, um, dogs. That should be enough. So, uh, and what dogs found there? There we go. So now we actually have um, the paper. Okay. Uh, and so you can click into that. Now, now I'm f logging in from home and, and I don't have my um, VPN working right. So I, c I can't actually get a, a full copy of the paper from home. I can when I'm at work, but I can't. But you can. Uh, and so you should be able to click on full article and get that. It's probably going to ask me for money or something like that to do this. Yeah, <laughs> 61 bucks, holy crud. Yeah, um, but again, when you're on U of T, uh, you, can just, you can just get it, um, totally. And so now we have that study. So now you should read the study uh, and then you know base your summary on this study, okay? But that's the idea. Using ChatGPT and using Google Scholar, find, an experiment about something you like. And again, you can ask, you know, it can be all on any topic you want. Whoops, any topic you want. Uh, I forgot that one wasn't very good. But with ChatGPT, you can, you know, just, just anything you want to ask it about in psychology. What are, you, what are you interested in in psychology? Ask it about some experiments in that area. And, you know, d don't think of this as a peer scholar activity and how can I, what can I do to get the grade? Think of this as, as an opportunity for you to do what we call self-directed learning. What is something you would like to know more about in the realm of psychology? Check it out. Do it because you want to know. Get to that paper because you'd like to know about that paper. And then describe it like you would to students like you were describing it. If you go through that whole process in a very honest way, um, you will learn a great deal. And then in the future, anything you want to know about, you know how to find out about it. It's right there. And that's really the goal here is to make you feel really comfortable saying, hey, I want to know an answer to the question, but I want the scientific answer. I want the research supported answer. I don't want to see what the Internet tells me is true. I want to know what the research tells me is true. And so therefore, I am going to go to something like Google Scholar, where I know I will get in contact with original research and really get out what what really happened. That's what I want you to get out of this. OK, cool. There will be one other benefit potential benefit and and i'll put this in a in a tab here which is um, remember sapo that came into class the student that was one of you not long ago and who is now a Rhodes scholar on his way to the uk um, he's created a platform that's all about sharing science and he's trying to use it as a bridge between high school and university so he's trying to convince first year students like you to post something about a scientific article on his platform, which is called Clematis, um, which is a flower, um, <laughs> science blooming, I guess. Uh, and so um, we're going to make you an offer that after you've completed your peer scholar activity, if you also want to submit your um, piece to uh, the platform and, and he'll have some suggestions about how that'll look, then you can get a bonus grade in this course for choosing to do that, to, to put that up on the platform and share it with others. And then maybe even engage in interactions with, with grade 12s who might find your presentation interesting, your, your experimental presentation might have questions about it, etc. So that'll be an option to get a bonus mark in the course if you wanna take it that next step. And that really only makes sense if you understand what you did right so so if you go through it and do it in the right way okay cool i think that's relatively clear i hope that's relatively clear but of course i will have a q a section within this module as well and i will continually update that with questions that come from the class okay hopefully that's uh that'll get you going off you go um this is by the way an individual assignment so it's just you working on your own as you go through this um, so yeah, have a good time. I hope you learn a lot. I hope you find some really cool experiments. I'm interested in, in finding uh, out more about the experiments you guys find interesting. All right. Later. <laughs>